Welcome back to International Scale Modder, I'm Lee. Uh, today we're going to do a review on a new trumpeter release. It's the A37A Dragonfly in 148. Now, uh, as you all know, we've got a, a Vietnam GB coming up on ISM very soon, and I'm going to be reviewing a few kits for that uh, GB, just so that you've got some idea of some Vietnam uh, theatre stuff that's out at the moment. Mainly all aircraft, I'm afraid. Um, but this is a new release. Now, this is a Cessna. And to see a Cessna bristling with weapons like that, weaponry like that, yeah, I think it's absolutely awesome. It's a cracking looking aircraft and it's a toss up for me to whether I build this or the um, excuse me, the Meng 172 one that I've got. Um, I haven't quite made up my mind yet. I really want to do this, but I think Paul's planning on doing this, so I might do the Meng one anyway. But um, anyway, without further ado, let's have a look inside the box, see what it is. Right, okay then, so the Trumpeter 148A 37A Dragonfly. Now, I've got to say, when they announced this kit, I was fairly excited. <laughs> I've got to say, this is a Cessna. Um, now, the name evokes just a normal single prop engine, you know, little you know, to and fro airplane. But, I mean, this is just a cracking little aircraft. You look at it, it's, it's a small aircraft and it's bristling with all this weaponry. Um, and I just think it looks the mutts nuts, I really do. And with the Vietnam Tritone camo scheme, I think it really does look the business um, and when this was announced I thought well I've got to have that and straight away obviously put a pre-order in with Tim at value kits for it but um, it does look a really nice once it's made up a really nice kit so we're going to just have a look inside the box and uh, see what it is on the box itself it's got a little bit about the Cessna A37 uh, how it's made up on a camo scheme apart from that again another camo scheme but uh, not really anything else nice sturdy box as his trumpeters want so let's uh, get everything out. I like the fact that they haven't done a too big a box either. They haven't wasted all that, you know, plastic and stuff like that. So let's get straight into it. Uh, we have the wings. Right, first impressions. So nice plastic. I do kind of like the trumpeter plastic. It's very easy to to work with um, on a you know when you're sanding and stuff like that. The mold lines are a little bit soft. I've got to say they're not as clean and crisp as some that um, you do see. Uh, let me just get you in so you can have a look. Okay. But you'll just notice that you know like here they're quite wide and they're, here they're not really crisp, clean and crisp like dead you know really laser cut sort of thing um, but there is some nice detail on there and everything rivets and, and what have you uh, and I like the fact that these are already made on the wings the uh, the fuel tanks already on the ends of the wings um, now that would be interesting because usually you'd make them and then pop them uh, pop them on so it'd be interesting to see how that works but uh, some very nice engraving in detail all the way up the uh, sides of the wings and everything so very nice indeed and you see it's not a, it's not gonna be a massive it's seven inch um seven inches uh wide on the wingspan so that's going to fit nicely in the cabinet actually um it's not going to dominate everything which is really nice but um you've got to love this picture i love this picture um let's go what else have we got there's the fuselage So the fuselage, um, you, you can see it wasn't a big aircraft at all. Look at that. Look, the wingspan is wider, is longer than the body, but uh, the fuselage. But um, you've got uh, the uh, the tub here, the interior cockpit interior. Again, some nice little detail on there that can be picked out. Not amazing, but it's enough. Uh, although it is quite an open canopy, so you're going to see a bit in there. So it might be worth spending a little bit extra if there's uh, any photo etch out for it at the moment, which I don't think there is, but it won't be long before anyway, I'll bring something out. The instrument panel, let's get you right in here so you can have a look. There you go. See the instrument panel, it's got quite a lot of detail on there, as you can see. There's loads to pick out, um, but it's very fine detail. I've got to say, it really would be nice to have a, an Edouard color set for that, but uh, the seats themselves, Fairly basic, but you know, a bit better than some that you see. And as you can see on these tail planes and everything, it's a nice level of rivet detail and stuff like that. And the fuselage itself, as you can see, you'll have to excuse the builders out the back there, but 
So it's a nice detail, nice rivets and everything. So they come up reasonably nice. The fuselage large lines are better than the wing lines. They're not as soft as the wing lines. Uh, but overall, uh, the flash-wise, I can't see any flash. There doesn't seem to be any burring on the on the edges or anything like that. So that's very nice to see. Uh, we've then got uh, uh, a bag full of odds and sods. We've got um, panels, turbines. Um, we've then got the intake covers, uh, the wheels are single piece, I like that, I don't like two piece wheels, I'm not a fan of them. And you've got lots of other odds and sods, um, you've got the inside of the gear, there's some lovely detail, I have to keep zooming you in here, but you've got some lovely detail. On these, on the inside of the wheel bays by the looks of it. Some lovely stuff that you can pick out there on both of them. That's a nice little touch, and as you can see on these ones as well, plenty of detail to pick out and uh, go to town on. So that's that's a really nice touch. I like that. Uh, they've really done a bit of work. There's no need for any aftermarket in the wheelbase there for sure, because they're they're more than enough. But apart from that, again, there's a little bit of flash on the sprue, but again, I can't see any on the parts. There is some burring on this, I've got to say, they've, they've got the uh, burrs, which I call the join marks, where the moulds have joined together, and it's just produced this little burr on here, so that's on quite a lot on that sprue, that's on everything, that burring. So a little work with the scalpel before you glue it all together. You've then got the armament, and there's quite a bit of this, you know, for a little tiny plane like this. <laughs> Two sprues of <laughs> armament, let's have a look, they're both mirror sprues, so uh, not immense detail, but uh, yeah, detail nonetheless. Uh, very nice. It's a clean and crisp again. Uh, the two halves look like they should go together okay. They've got locating pins on the other sides, as you can see. Um, a lot of times I find locating pins aren't, <laughs> don't locate properly, but I usually tend to, on um, bombs and things like that, I usually tend to cut the, the, uh, the locating pins off and put them together by hand. Um, and then I use the Tamiya squeezing method, which is basically I fill it with Tamiya Thin and then squeeze them together, produce it, it joins them, plus it produces this mould line around the edge so that you can um, you can sand down rather than having to fill them, which is much, much better. Uh, we've then got some little odds and sods. Uh, we've got an extra spew, sprue here, spew, sprue, uh, which it looks like just the nose cone itself, not bother taking it out or anything, um, which has, I think it's a different nose cone actually maybe a separate one uh, because the one on the box is completely different to that so let me just have a quick look this may be an additional part <clears throat> i can't see another nose cone but uh yeah that looks completely different to to this section on here which has got one headlight on it so we'll have to see what that how that comes out uh, we've then got uh, the clear parts, probably one of the most important parts of an aircraft model, I feel. It's nice that they come wrapped, very nice indeed. Uh, I do like this, I'm liking that a lot of manufacturers do this, obviously except Airfix, which don't do it anymore, which don't do anything really for your money. Alright, let's have a look. Oh, very nice. I have to say that is very nice indeed. First impressions are they are absolutely crystal clear. And where they've been wrapped, there's not a single scuff mark on there. Let me just get that in for you. As you can see, absolutely beautiful. Really crystal clear. And now that's quite important. If you look at the size of that, that's a thumb. So you look at the size of that canopy. Um, it's going to be what you do with the cockpit is going to be very important on this. A lot of aircraft models, you can't see the cockpit, uh, but this one you can most definitely. And I, to be honest with you, I think I'm going to wait to build this until uh, I get a photo etch set from Eduard because I really want to show that cockpit off. With that, I want to get some seats and everything for that. Um, uh, I won't put, I don't put figures in my models in my aircraft, but that definitely needs um, some updating. And everything because you can see, you're going to see everything in that cockpit so really really nice i love that glass let's just have a look to see if there's any uh, warping effect and i've got to say close up that's excellent look at that 
That is absolutely brilliant. Really, really nice glass. Look at that. Hardly any warping whatsoever. Excellent. Excellent job, Trumpeter. Most, most impressed with that. And I'm going to wrap this up properly because I don't want to ruin that, that's for sure. They've taken the effort, then so shall I. But uh, yeah, that's that's really, really good. I'm impressed with that. As I say, I think um, the canopy glass on an aircraft is one of the most important things you need to get right with the model because it's, you know, the canopy is the place it's naturally drawn to by the eye. And it's the first place anyone looks when they look at a model. And that's where Airfix get it wrong completely. Their canopy glass is the worst on the market. <laughs> oh dear, am I harping on about Airfix again? What a shame. Uh, right, okay, so now we've got the decals. Now I'm, I'm liking the look of this decal sheet. It's very small. Um, like the modern, more modern jets. It comes covered as well. Oh, there's two decal sheets. Now, there you go. What I like, what I like about uh, uh, a lot of the companies now that are covering the decal sheets, this is a really good idea because it really needs to be done, I think. Uh, so let's have a look at the first set. We've got um, quite a lot of decals, really. I'm just going to have a quick look and see if I can read what it says. And I can, so very, very good indeed. All of that I can read, every single part of that. As you can see, very nice indeed. Now the decals are a little bit on the shiny side for my liking, but not too bad. Unfortunately, um, I can see a few problems here. I doubt the camera's picking it up um, at all. But the carrier film carries over the decal by quite a margin, which is a bit of a shame for modern decals, I've got to say. It's And it's not a small amount, it's a large amount. So not good and uh, the decals seem to have separated from the paper a bit uh, you really probably can't see it but it looks like they've separated from the paper a little bit uh, for sure uh, I think we might have trouble with those decals be interesting to see because uh, I know Paul's got this kit so it'll be interesting to see if he's got the same problem with his decals uh, let's have a look at the other sheet see now this sheet has separated as well there's a small separation there Again, the carrier film, it carries right over the edge. Uh, I think most manufacturers should just outsource to Cartograph and leave it at that. Stop doing their own decals. <laughs> um, can't go wrong Cartograph. Again, these are going to need a trim for sure. They're definitely going to need a trim. The trouble is with these, I think with these these yellow parts, I think they'll you can quite easily paint them on anyway. So uh, I've, I'm starting to paint a lot of my decals now just because I'm fed up with them being ruined. Um, or not looking as good as they should do, you know. Uh, but uh, but that's the decals. Now the instruction manual. Let's see what else we got in here. We've got a, a little advert for uh, Trumpeter. Uh, obviously, what's coming out soon. All their new toolings and everything. Some nice things there actually. And uh, some P and everything for then uh, defense DDG defense uh, air defense uh, ship. Uh, we've got then the, oh no, no, let's have a look, we've got some PE, uh, it's a nice little sheet of PE, uh, you've got lots of little extras on there, I would imagine this is, yeah, you've got the vents for the, the intakes in the, uh, the rear of the jet, you've got some seat belts on there, and these I would imagine uh, vortices for underneath the wings and things like that, it'll be interesting to see, I reckon that's where they go, we'll have a look when we get in the instructions, but I reckon they're for the wings. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to get photo etch. It's quite thick photo etch as well. It's not thin stuff. Always good to have a baggie of a photo etch. I think it's a given thing these days now. Uh, with any decent manufacturers, of course. Uh, right, the booklet is A4. It's black and white. It's paper. Um, a little write-up on the front of... No, there isn't a little write-up of the A37A. Just a few odds and sods and keys and things. Oh, we have a colour slide inside. We'll have a look at that in a minute. You've then got a sprue map on the inside uh, and everything else. And then we go over to here and it just says obviously putting the cockpit together. Uh, it's a, a colours you need to use and everything. As you can see it's, it's a large tub, it is a large cockpit. So I definitely will warrant a PE set I think without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, you've then got the wings, you're putting the wings together, uh, the intakes, things like that. Oh, it's very simple. It's going to be a reasonably quick build, I think. There's not a lot of plastic in the in the box, and then attaching the wings to the fuselage, uh, along with what I would imagine to be the air brake. Um, you can have that open or closed. As you can see inside the wheel bays here, there is some detail and everything, which is not uh, nice. 
It's then obviously putting other also nose. There are two different noses, yeah. There are two different noses. I thought there were, um, depending on the model. Uh, no, no, that is one new. No, there's one nose. Uh, it is one nose, so there's only the one. Uh, but uh, then you're saying put the canopy on and everything. You can have that open or close. So you've got this gas ram strut here if you want to open, uh, which is quite nice. I don't think you need to open this cockpit though. It's so big. You can there's not anything, not not any detail you're going to miss in there. Obviously the legs and everything, landing gear, and then you've got uh, the P vents and everything to go on. A little bit of bending there, not a lot to do, uh, so not too bad. And then putting the the wheels in and everything again. Those are the last things you should do. And then you've got the armament. Uh, depends how you what you're going to do your loadout with. I mean, looking at this, oh yeah, there is. Um, you've got quite a bit to choose from. <laughs> Luckily, all the hard points are the same, and pylons look uh, pretty much the same, so they're going to be interchangeable with the armaments. Uh, and the loadout, uh, look at that, just a lovely profile, don't you think? I think this thing is a really nice profile. Um, you've then got here what you can put on obviously, fuel tanks, uh, A3 rocket pods, SU 14 AAs, M117s, Mark 81s, and a minigun pod as well. Uh, it looks like, apart from the, the fuel tanks, obviously, which uh, depends on where you want to put them, uh, you can fully load that out with everything as, as you see fit. Um, I would imagine you could probably look at your references for that, but uh, it's, they're saying that you can put anything anywhere, which is, uh, which is brilliant. So whatever you feel best, I like that, I like that choice. Right, lastly, we have the uh, colour call out and everything. I love to see this, this is brilliant. Nothing like a nice colour call out to give you an idea of how the plane should look. Um, now if you have a look on here, we've got uh, colour call outs for Mr. Hobby, yay! Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya, and Humbrol. Uh, the only ones that got all the correct colours are Mr. Hobby, which is brilliant because that's what I've got. And what I like to see here, as you can see, they've got this faded effect. You can see that they've actually, when they've done the colour call outs, they've actually put the panel line pre shading in as well. It's <laughs> a lovely little touch. And you can see how effective that panel shading is going to be on this colour scheme. It really is going to look good. Um, painting effort, you've got this really rough edge, it's not a smooth edge. Now, if you have a look on the box, you've got this wavy line here. Um, but on the, the actual colour call out, it's not a wavy line, it's just a very uh, gradiated edge. So it'll be interesting to see which one is true, because getting that gradi gradiated edge with the different colours is going to be a bit difficult, but uh, fun nonetheless. Uh, but as you can see, very nice indeed. You've then got the, the call outs for the uh, armament again. Same same paint references, and uh, again you've got this gradiated thing. Is I think they'll have to do a bit of um, because there's two different things here for sure on their uh, on their call out so on the box art and the the, uh, the paint guide. So I would definitely say do your research on that um, and make sure you get it right because on here it's quite a hard line. On there it's definitely not. Hard line, but I do love that. It just looks brilliant, it? it really does. Uh, so, uh, uh, final thoughts um, I would say definitely a great little kit, a great price from Tim at Value Kits as well. Excellent price, um, and it's not too big, not too small. It's going to be a nice looking model on your shelf, and it's going to look a bit different than the normal stuff you've probably got, which is what I like. I like different. So for me, that's a that's a total recommend. Uh, that's the Trumpeter 148 A37A Dragonfly. Thumbs up. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.